What's up, YouTube? What up, friends and fam? All right, to continue my life story, part three. Um, we left off where I was about to go to Europe. So the whole reason why I went to Europe, or wound up going to Europe, I always wanted to go to Europe. I was dating a German girl at the time who I met in Miami like two years prior. We saw each other a couple times. Like I, I cheated on her, or whatever, and we broke up for a little bit. But then things were all right, so I flew over there to Germany to go visit her. And um, you know, I was drinking at the time, and you know, right before I left, I had my last uh, prescription of Adderall. Then once I went to Germany, I didn't bring any Adderall with me. So I was coming off of Adderall, went over there drinking. Um, I had a blast. Like, Germany's fucking awesome. Um, but, like, two weeks into it, like, she had enough with me, and I had enough with her. It was, it was mainly my fault, though. I'm not going to lie. I don't, I don't think we were a match anyway, but I was drinking all day, every day. Like, cheap, like beer over there is, like, 50 cents uh, or 50 cents on the euro, whatever that is. Um, so, beer over there is literally the best in the world and it's cheaper than water so if you like drinking um and you're on your vacation I, I don't see why you wouldn't drink every day like I was doing so I, I was drinking every day um it, it, it was pretty bad you know what I mean like I was having way too much fun getting drunk way too much I was like you know it was out of control I I spent so much money on that trip uh I was actually still in debt from that trip up till this year I paid it off. Finally, the credit card went to a collection agency and I paid off $700 on a... This doesn't make any sense. I paid $700, the credit card off, and I owed like eight grand. I was like, how does that happen? So that happened. Um, so after two weeks, I left Germany and I rented a smart car and I drove the smart car all the way to Sicily. Because I always wanted to go to Sicily. I don't regret any of this, by the way. Because Sicily was the most beautiful place I've ever been to. The women there are the most beautiful women I've ever seen. I thought I've seen beautiful women there in America, in Miami, or in Southern California, but they don't even compare. I don't. I don't know what else to say. Like you got to get over there and, and see it. They have long hair. They have beautiful bodies. They're always. They're always dressed to impress in Sicily, which impressed me. Like, the guys are always got, like, a button-down on, business pants on. Even if they're just going to the restaurant or even if they're just going to get mail or something, they dress up to leave the house. So I thought that was pretty impressive because I certainly don't do that. So I admired it. Um, so then after Sicily, I wound up flying back home. I was continuing to drink, and I couldn't contain myself. So I went down to Florida. Um spent a few weeks at Key West before I finally checked myself into a um, halfway house down there. I met my ex-girlfriend there, um, and then she was staying at the sober house too I was staying at. So then after a few weeks of us working, we saved up enough money together and we got us like a month-by-month um, -month rental place in Hollywood, Florida. Um, and then from there, we rented another place. I was doing a landscape company at the time. And she, I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to speak on her, but, you know, things were like, you know, they, they were, they were kind of dodgy to start. I should have left that relationship right when it started. She's still a good friend of mine, but our habits are totally different. You know what I mean? I like waking up early. She doesn't. Um, so I kind of, it was all my fault though. I should have left because I adjusted my schedule to be around her schedule and if you're an above average, or if you have above average goals in life, you can't adjust your your uh, your lifestyle to fit in with average people. It's just not gonna work out. You'll be miserable, you'll, you'll be depressed, you're not gonna get any of the shit done that you wanna get done. So you gotta adjust your schedule around what fits your vision. Um, and that's, that's that, man. So, went through like four years of that, or five years of that, um, then finally I moved to North Dakota, moved to North Dakota, did, uh, that was my first time not living with her in a while, so, um, actually before North Dakota, I went to the Bahamas for a little bit, I lived on a boat in the Bahamas, we were building an island on the Bahamas, I was part of a dredge crew, 
it was a cool it was a cool deal i was getting like 200 bucks a day plus you know rent was free and food was free that was cool um we were just living on a deserted island and there was literally nothing there there was no girls there there was no stores there everything that we got to the boat had to get imported from bimini and that was annoying everything was so expensive and you know i stayed in the same room as like 14 other guys or 12 other guys so it was it was kind of like bunk bed setting uh it, it wasn't horrible at the time you know i just wasn't in the right mindset um there was no gym there you know like looking back on it if i had to do it again i definitely wouldn't now because i have my own business and i know how to get my own customers but like you know, I, I could have made it work if I was more uh, optimistic about it. I did meet some good people, people that I still talk to this day. They, you know, when you live with somebody on a boat, you know, they become like your brother. Um, one of my buddies, Paul, um, I reached out to him for advice. He really, you know, always believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. He was always there to believe in me. So he, he was a big ups for him. But anyways, then I went to North Dakota, drove, drove trucks up in North Dakota for a couple months. Uh, dated the girl in Massachusetts, who was uh, nothing short of a psycho. Um, and then I, from there, wound up, you know, wound up in Nantucket Island working for my buddy's dad's uh, dump truck or trash removal company. I got so depressed. That was that was the last summer. And I got so depressed doing that that it's like it's crazy how much of improvement I made in one year. So if you're in a tough spot, you're depressed and you're down and out, like I'm telling you you can't do it. Last last summer I was beyond depressed. Like I was that was horrible. Um, and the only reason I stuck there is for the money. Um, which I did save up a little bit, you know, I saved up a nest egg. And I only saved up like 14 grand, honestly, in like three or four months, which isn't horrible, but like in today's standards for myself, that that's pretty bad. <laughs> you know, like I can I can save that up way more quickly now. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much the story right there. Then, you know, one thing led to another. I wound up back home in Massachusetts for Christmas time. Caught COVID with the family. Um, and then I was thinking about moving back to Florida, not with my ex, but with a friend, Dustin. And then I was really gonna go, and then we caught COVID, and then, um, so I had to readjust my plan. And then once we were sitting down, we caught COVID. My, down, my dad wound up in the ICU for two weeks. So then I was like, you know, is going back to Florida the best thing, or should I try to stay around my family so I can be here if anything happens to them or if they need my help? Um, so that was the main motivation of staying, staying back here. So then I started looking for work around here because I know the, the economy is better in Massachusetts than anywhere, really. Um, you know, New England, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. We have a better economy up here than the rest of the country. And I, I find the work-life balance is way easier here. Like, I can make a thousand dollars a week anywhere I go then I can find a place to rent for like fifteen hundred dollars a month like everything included so I think like you know the life the life balance is way easier here it's more like if, compared to Florida you can find a place for fifteen hundred dollars a month but you're only gonna make six hundred dollars a week and you're gonna be busting your ass or eight hundred dollars a week like busting your ass I find people work way, way less hard up here way less hours for twice the money, like, no lie. Um, so that was the main motivation, you know, financial, and be around my, my family, which worked out. <coughs> so, you know, and then one thing led to another, I started doing snow removal, I responded to a few Craigslist ads where people needed, like, a snow guy. So I became their snow guy, started getting, like, company rates on snow removal, then one thing led to another. I talked to one of my customers. He needed tree work done. Uh, asked if I did tree work, and you know I know my buddy that does the the tree trimming for us, the climber. So eventually got in touch with him. I I took on the work without him being up here. Hired a few people off Craigslist. We knocked down some trees, um, but nothing. Nobody climbed for me. But then finally I got my climbers up here, and then it's been history ever since, man. 
really has been history ever since. Um, this was a real fast forward version of my story. Um, I hope you guys got something out of it because I don't want to keep boring y'all with like my life story. It's, it's kind of sad to tell, honestly. It puts me, in a, <laughs> puts me in a vulnerable place, but I'm glad I'm getting it off my chest and I'm glad people are listening to it and they can finally see that if they're going through something or you're going through something, you can certainly get on the other side of it. Um, not overnight, but you can make this decision to do it overnight at a moment, but it's constant, constant, every day, every day, you gotta do it. Just like I wake up early every day, no matter what, it, you gotta do it, it's every day. There's been one slip up I had where I didn't set my alarm properly or, or something like that, or I hit snooze when I was sleeping. Uh, that was a couple months ago and I slept in till like six o'clock. And man, that, that day was horrible, man. Like that day was horrible. The, be the best PMA comes from waking up early consistently. I wake up early consistently. I get up at 3 a.m. every day now. Um, and right when that alarm clock goes up, I, I spring out of bed, so. There's just no secret, man. It's just hard work. It's, it's boring. Um, you have to go to bed earlier than everybody else. People aren't gonna understand that, but that is okay. You, you gotta do it to be successful. You gotta wake up early to be successful. Look at like some of the most successful people all wake up at 3 a.m. or all wake up at 3.30 or 2.45. They just do it, you know what I mean? Like I get so much shit done in the morning time when I'm having my coffee I'm either reading my book or, you know, responding. Lately, it's been responding to customers, to be honest. You know, I, I'd like to get some more personal development in there, i.e. by reading the book. Um, but right now, I have a goal of setting up work for the next two weeks. Right now, we're set up for the next um, almost week, next five or six days. But, you know, I want to set up for the next two or three weeks so then I can start implementing this and that and not be so stressed out about like finding work you know what I mean because I'm the only one that does the quotes so I have to put in a lot more work and I have to set up the crew I'm, I'm like the foreman plus the the sales guy plus everything for the company which I'm not complaining about man like I want to get this down so then once I hired somebody I can explain to them what's the most proficient way to do it um, to do sales to do this to do that we're just saving up money right now for the dump truck and for the chipper and you know we just gotta bust open these quotes like right now i'm driving an hour away from where we're at because i found a job where the lady can keep the wood so i'm going out there quoting it if i get it great if i don't i'm not gonna fucking cry about it you know what i mean even though i had to drive an hour out of the way um it is what it is it's it's the risk of business you gotta you gotta take risks every day in business if you even consider this a risk, you know what I mean? It's it's a drive, you know? You gotta you gotta take time to put into your business and make it run. You just, you simply have to. Just like if you wanna get jacked at the gym, you gotta go to the gym every day and put time into it. If you want your bank account to develop larger, you gotta pick something to make money off of and then put, put a fuck ton of work in it. There's no way around it. There's just no way around it. Like residual income, Residual income still requires hours and hours of work every fucking day. I, I don't care what anybody says. Yeah, you can give people money and they can invest it for you. Um, so I haven't found somebody to do that for me. So if you find somebody to do that that can make money for you when you don't even have to work residually, then hit me up. But most of it's a goddamn scam. Residual shit doesn't exist. It's hard work. Then hard work, consistent hard work leads to good luck. So, you know, if you go to 10 houses, chances are one or two of them will pick you for the, your service. And then that, there's your good luck, you know? And then every now and then you'll get 10 out of 10 houses when you're doing quotes. But that's it for today. I love you guys. That was part three. So please subscribe. Um, and if you've made it this far, please hit the like button. All right. Thank you.